tsunami, the ocean's deadliest force. Giant waves with immense power. Massive, unstoppable, deadly. A level of destruction that was, you know, over hundreds of miles of the coastline. We'll travel the globe investigating some of the world's most devastating tsunamis. Each bigger than the last. Each packing more punch. Each taking us one step closer to an ultimate tsunami. A wave that will not just rewrite the record books, it will erase them. No coastline on the planet is truly safe from tsunamis. They're caused by massive displacements of water, triggered by the Earth's most powerful forces, earthquakes, landslides, and volcanic eruptions. As long as we have earthquakes on Earth and landslides, the, the various phenomena that create tsunamis, we're going to have tsunami waves. Uh, it's just a matter of time when the next one strikes. Tsunamis are dramatically different from the typical waves that constantly sweep across the planet. They can travel faster than 800 kilometers per hour. They can stretch for thousands of square kilometers across the ocean surface. It's a good 15, 20 feet tall. Easy. They strike with huge mass and terrifying velocity. The most common method of gauging their height is run-up the wave's highest point of impact on land. Each tsunami profiled here has a higher run-up than the last. Over 100 major tsunamis have struck in the past 100 years, killing hundreds of thousands and destroying billions of dollars of property. But they are not the biggest tsunamis to strike the planet. Scientists have found startling evidence that even larger waves have occurred in the past mega tsunamis. These things have been described as, as culture ending events. Experts believe that a mega tsunami lies in our future. To understand its power, scale and potential, we'll first investigate five of the most destructive tsunamis of the past 60 years. Each has its own character, each has its own story, each brings us closer to an ultimate disaster. Hawaii is a tropical paradise that attracts millions of tourists. But this Pacific island holds a dark secret. It's blasted by more tsunamis than almost anywhere else on the planet. The Hawaiian Islands, sitting as they do in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, are affected by tsunamis from all regions of the Pacific. The Ring of Fire is a volatile fracture zone surrounding the Pacific Ocean Plate. 90% of the world's earthquakes occur here. Earthquakes are the most common cause of tsunamis, which is why Hawaii gets hit often and from all directions. Destructive tsunami struck here in 1837, 1868, 1877, 1923, 1946, 52, 57, 60, and 64. This makes it the unofficial tsunami capital of the Pacific. 2.28 a.m. April 1st, 1946. A magnitude 8.1 earthquake rips through the Aleutian Islands off the coast of Alaska. A huge stretch of the ocean floor is uplifted, displacing the entire column of water above it. A massive pulse of energy propels a wall of water, a tsunami, towards Hawaii at nearly 800 kilometers per hour. Three thousand eight hundred kilometers away, in the small seaside village of Laupahoehoe, children and teachers gather to prepare for the day's classes. Masu McShane is one of the teachers. We were in our cottages, and the Akionas who lived in that house that's no longer there, 
knocked on our door and said, come see the tidal wave. At first glance, it's deceptively innocent. We looked over and the wave, ocean sucked out. And then it came in a little bit more, like emptying a bathtub and sucked out again. And we said, this is a tidal wave. I don't think much of that. What Masu doesn't know is that tsunamis are not single waves. They move forward in what's known as a tsunami train, a group of waves of many different sizes. First waves are seldom the largest, so what appears to be insignificant is actually the precursor to something much, much bigger. And then it did it again. And this time, it went in further and sucked out more. And we thought, a twin died away, tied away. How interesting and odd. As the water recedes, an extraordinary 152 meters, Masu and her roommates pose for a photograph. Masu stands captivated while a third wave approaches. Famous last words, I said, I hope this will be a big one. And it kept coming. And that was the first time we ever thought to be afraid. As the tsunami approaches shore, it behaves like a giant train wreck. The front of the wave slows while the back continues to push. The wave's energy is compressed, forcing it to stand and lift out of the sea. It's got bigger and so we dropped the camera, ran inside. I can remember the water just crashed in the windows. The roof fell down. And I knew I was going to die. Masu spends the next nine hours clinging to debris before finally being rescued. She is the only lucky one. At the school, 16 children and five teachers are lost. But the tsunami is not finished with Hawaii. 37 kilometers south of Laupahoehoe, the sleepy trading town of Hilo Bay is also caught unawares. Here, the tsunami destroys nearly 500 homes and businesses, kills 96, and injures hundreds. Descriptions of the 1946 tsunami were that it came across the breakwater with the greatest of ease, just overcame it, and then washed across town. Other people describe seeing boulders blasted out as the water surged across. Walter Dudley is an oceanographer from the University of Hawaii in Hilo Bay. For more than 20 years, he studied tsunamis. One of his most significant findings is that their destructive power is caused not just by the wave itself, but also by what's underneath them. Well, one of the things that makes them such an interesting phenomenon to study is that they are all different. And as they travel across the oceans, they're affected by the ocean floor along their tracks. So the waves are constantly being bent or refracted. And then as they come ashore, they are further altered. No two pieces of coastline are the same. Each has its own unique undersea topography that affects the waves differently. In Hilo, it is the natural rounded shape of the bay. You can think of a bathtub. And as little children get in a bathtub, they can slosh the water back and forth. And they quickly find out that there's a speed at which the water will really move. The first two waves to hit the bathtub-shaped Hilo Bay caused the water to slosh back and forth. When a third wave arrived, it combined with the sloshing water to produce a larger and more destructive wave. It pretty much wiped out everything that was on the ocean side of town in the main parts of downtown it picked up the railway and it twisted the railway rails into pretzels the third wave reached a run-up height of nine meters it destroyed most of the foreshore of Hilo Bay but less than 15 years after the 46 disaster Hawaii would again be hit by a deadly tsunami a wave bigger than the last that would defy logic and bring Hilo to its knees once more. On May 22, 1960, the large...